Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury, a show where I work to teach you everything I wished I'd known about habits to help you graduate to the next level in your own life. Today is another installment of The Morning Commute, where I take my ride to work in the morning to share a short but powerful message with you to help you kick your day off on the right foot. And today's message is this. I'm not feeling the flow. Over the past couple days, I have tried to record several Morning Commute episodes. And typically, I'll, I might start or stop once or twice, but normally within a car ride, I'll be able to get at least one. And the past couple days, it's been start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, and then, you know what, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm not getting in the flow, I'm, you know, I don't have the vibe right now, I don't have the energy or the focus or it doesn't feel good or the words aren't flowing or, oh, that's not going to be valuable for them, you need to really just back off on this and stop. And what's interesting is when, there are times absolutely where that happens. There's times where the recording just doesn't come together. The words don't flow, it doesn't feel cohesive, it doesn't deliver an impact and it's like there's definitely times where I'm like yeah no that just wasn't it man that that's that's one we're not going to put out or let's try again but the interesting thing is when that becomes the reality or the regular now see this is another example I, I was like shit that doesn't make sense now start over but no guys we're sticking with this one all right not the regular when that becomes the common behavior when that becomes the default there we go see see starting to come, <laughs> when that becomes the default, all of a sudden we can say, no, I just, I don't feel the flow today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I don't feel the flow right now. I'm going to do it later. And flow and the desire and the emotion can become a very convenient procrastination tool and an avoidance mechanism as well. Oh, I'll really start going out there and dating people, or I'll get back out into the dating pool because I really want to meet someone and have a healthy relationship once I get back in shape. Oh, but every time it comes time to go to the gym, it's I don't feel like it. And something that Mel Robbins talks a lot about in the book, The Five Second Rule, and in her TED Talk is that she, she says you're never going to feel like it, which I don't fully agree with, but there are certainly things, like when you're changing a habit, it's oh, it is. There's much more resistance that you face early on in shifting a habit and building consistency in that habit. So it's not that because, for example, working out. Like there have been times in my life, absolutely, where I just didn't feel like it. I don't want to, but I knew that deep down I did. Deep down, the best version of me was saying, "Hey, man, we know this is going to give us more energy, more clarity." more joy, we're going to feel better, or it's going to increase confidence because we're taking care of ourselves, like, let's, let's do it, man, even though on the surface, it's like, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, I'm the bed's warm, yeah, you know, like, all those feelings, so when it comes to desiring a flow state, I think a very dangerous thing is to wait for the emotional state to come before we take action, because like my coach Peter Scott says, clarity is not a requirement for taking action. It is a result of taking action. And that, I think, there, there couldn't be more truth in that line. Because there have been so many times in my life where I've been sitting there waiting for the inspiration, waiting for the energy, waiting for the, um, the information, the knowledge to show up, which sounds kind of funny. But <coughs> I was waiting for this thing to make it easy. And I never really saw it that way until very recently. Until very recently, I realized that a lot of my procrastination tools or my avoidance mechanisms or my frustrations were coming in short game thinking. So again, looking for an instant response and an instant uh, feedback loop and feedback mechanism. But additionally, I was losing my thought. Again, guess yes, yes. <laughs> This is where, I, like, I want to, I want you to see this and hear this because this is how it goes sometimes. I was like, oh, there it is. I'm in my zone. I'm, on, I'm, I'm in my flow. Boom. Great. And then a thought just totally slips and disappears. So this is the reality of it. It's like 
because I've been doing this for years and years and I've done this it feels like thousands of times, I mean, easily hundreds and hundreds of times, that I'm able to do episodes better than I ever could years ago or I'm able to rattle off an episode more quickly. Um, but there are certainly days like this. There are days where there are ums, there are days where there are pauses, there are days where the words just don't freaking come. <laughs> and we're going to get back on track though. We're going to finish this, and I'm showing you this because I want us to be growing in this together, and I don't want you to have the perception that the clean or polished or, you know, like, edited interviews that I do are my reality all the time. Like, I I work to do very minimal editing. In fact, I know because I don't want to do all kinds of editing, but, um, and on these morning commutes, I basically might only edit out like a long silent break if I needed to focus on driving for a second. But when it comes to waiting for the energy, when it comes to waiting for the feeling to show up, what I have found time and time again for myself is that waiting for a feeling is, I mean, you're so at the mercy of your current state and your current mindset. Whereas if you choose to take action, you can generate energy. Like there, um, just energy in general has something that I have battled with most of my adult life in terms of just constantly feeling tired, not exhausted, not drained, nothing extreme, but just always, oh man, I'm so tired. You know, I'm tired and busy. It's like those words, I'm like, dude, I don't want to live in that anymore. So I've spent a lot of time choosing that and and it's like, am I doing everything I could be doing to really increase the that my energy levels, the duration of my energy, the consistency of my energy, to do it healthily? And it's like, no. It's like, all right, well, let's start really working there to make this happen. And one of those things is just being sleep. So the interesting thing that happens is when, let's say you're not feeling energized and life just feels like it's dragging. You just feel the energy dragging. You feel slow. It doesn't feel fun. And all of a sudden, you finally get up and go do that thing that you've been talking about doing for months. Or you you know you're busy with your routine. You know that work has been rough. You know that there's a lot going on. And yet, you still pick up the phone, call your friend, and set up that, that night to go out and grab some food or drinks or whatever it may be or go on a hike. And you actively take a role in the way that your reality is being created because it goes so much deeper than just making a plan or something. It's, I'm not going to wait for life to come to me. I'm going to go seek out life. In The Alchemist, he talks about that we're each pursuing our own personal legend and that it's uh, that our part of our purpose on earth, uh, Paulo Coelho says in The Alchemist, is to find God's perfection hidden throughout the world. And so, <coughs> and so f- to me, the way I interpret that is that there are these perfect, beautiful moments that are individual for us that exist all over the world. Some are very close, some are far away. And it's our job to take the time to go and seek them out. It's our job to go on the journey to find them because there's so much joy and beauty and excitement in life when we choose to live our lives the way we want to and be brave and face up against our challenges and go against the fear and just get out in the world and see what's possible. Because Michael Strahan says, uh, happiness comes from striving towards your potential. And so you see like all these different quotes, there's a journey, there's striving, there's action, there's, it's, there's movement, there is some form of movement. Now action doesn't have to be doing a thousand burpees, action can be picking up your journal and just writing out your plan for the week, or maybe setting some goals or writing down some things for 2019 that you really want to do, that really excite you. And you know what, maybe this is the year that I try indoor rock climbing. Maybe this is the year I take a cooking class or try out jujitsu. And cool. Well, why don't I schedule it? Okay, well, let me go online and find what's in my area. Actually, this one, wow, this one's got great reviews. That, that seems fun. Um, you know what, I'm going to give them a call. And I'm going to see if uh, they, maybe they offer a free class or a free week or something. And then put it on the calendar. Like, you see how that, that gets very exciting. 
when you take the time to schedule the things that you want to do in life, there are things to look forward to, to enjoy in the moment, and there's there's this constant... It's not about not living in the moment, because that's a dangerous trap of like getting into destination fallacy of where everything you do, it's like, oh, what's the next thing that's going to make me happy? Instead of, I'm really loving this, and I can't wait. I'm loving this ride. I'm loving each day. I'm loving the growth. I'm loving the transformation. I'm loving the process. Like Inky Johnson says, focus on the process, not the product. And when we're really enjoying that ride, then when it comes to those exciting moments or those bigger things, we can enjoy them even more. <coughs> we can celebrate even more. We can relax into them even more. And, you know, guys, I today was a great example of me not feeling the flow. And I said, I, I was thinking about it going on my way to the car. I actually snoozed and woke up late, which is becoming a rarity for me, which is very cool that it's becoming a rarity. And I woke up and in the past, I'm like, see, you do this all the time. This is you. You're, you're just not a morning person. You're blue. you like, it would have been like really negative self-talk today. I actually, uh, actually felt my first earthquake in California last night. So it felt like my bread, my bed was a, uh, one of those vibrating beds they have in the cheesy motels and stuff and movies. And I was up later than expected. And when the alarm went off, I just said, I want some extra time today. And when I got up, I said, okay, let's just do, you know, a couple things. We'll take care of the workout later. We'll do these things later. And that's not the normal routine anymore, but it felt good to see that shift and that change because just in the way I respond when I don't do exactly what I plan to do is good because it's a lot gentler and it's a lot nicer and I'm loving myself a lot more. And it's, it's real easy guys to just wait for the emotions. And then as the emotions don't come, then we feel like, Oh, man, like, well, maybe this isn't the right thing. Maybe I've got to find something else. Maybe it's the wrong person that I'm with. Maybe it's this. And then we go deeper down the rabbit hole and we're just sitting there thinking about why are we upset and why aren't things going well. We're going to find answers. Like, that's the thing. Your brain wants to give you answers. So even if we're asking really shitty questions, it's going to go, all right, well, I mean, why do things suck so much? Let me see. Let me see what I can find. Um, well, it's kind of cold, I think, like... It's like, really? It's 60 degrees in Southern California. Yeah, but that's like kind of cold for here. So you could be upset about that. And you go, yeah, I am upset about that. And it's, it's just this, this useless and non-beneficial cycle that we all get trapped in at times. We all just let ourselves go into. Some of the things I catch myself complaining about are, I like, they're laughable. They are so hilariously not important or not a big deal. But on certain days, when I'm in certain states, I can make it the biggest freaking deal. And I'm working on that. I'm working on lots of things. I'm working on things constantly because this is all a journey of growth and enjoying the ride, enjoying the process, and transforming. You know, that whole but or, uh, caterpillar to butterfly transformation can be at any moment and can be multiple times a day if we choose to show up differently and if we choose to take action. But in my life and what I've heard from many mentors and books and all kinds of things is that in order to actually change the reality, to change the feeling and change the emotional state, what we really need to do is move, take action, think about it, make a plan, set a date, schedule an appointment, um, take the steps and go talk to that girl. Like there's, there's so many things that it's just moving. Life has so much waiting for us, but we have to go on that journey to uncover things. We're trying to find the hidden treasure in God's perfection in the world, as Paulo Coelho would say, but we're not going and looking under that rock we've been curious about. We're not going on a walk through that forest. We're just sitting there waiting for the perfection to come to us. It's there, it exists within us, but I believe that the journey is what helps us reveal what's inside of us to ourselves and to the world, most importantly to ourselves. So, 
where in your life today are you feeling like I'm feeling today and just not feeling the flow of something you normally do, something you love to do, or you normally are able to just kick ass at? Where aren't you feeling the flow? Where do you feel stuck? And what's one action step you could take today? One small action, you would be amazed the amount of energy and joy and excitement that creates because it is you declaring for yourself that there are bigger things for you and that you want more from this life and that you're willing to work for it, even a small step. What's one small step you could take today? Well, guys, I love you and thank you all for joining me and for sticking with me today because this one was uh, super not, <laughs> not clean, coherent, at interruptions. It's a little bit all over the place, but this is real. This is how it goes sometimes. I'm tired, didn't get up as early as I wanted, I'm feeling foggy, and because I haven't been doing this consistently, because uh, over the, the break for Christmas and New Year's, I didn't do any episodes for a while, so it's just like I'm expecting to come back after not practicing and shooting the basketball for weeks and think I'm just going to be draining them like I, oh, like I used to. Hey man, I just got to get back in the ha- habit and get back into practice, but if I'm not finishing episodes... I'm like, all right, man, I'm, I, I got to do it. And I want to because this is one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite ways to share content with you. So this one was like, hey, man, one way or another, we're going we're gonna to finish this. We're going to see it through and just tell, tell the listeners honestly about what's going on and work through it and work to give them something that's valuable. So hopefully there were valuable chunks and valuable nuggets in this one for you all. And if you want to continue on this journey with me of – what I work to make be the, a very real and authentic expression of my journey in this personal development journey and through life. If you want to join me on this ride, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or on Google Play. If you would like to reach out to me directly to give me feedback on the show, recommend interviewees, contact me about speaking engagements, you can reach out to me at brian at overcominggraduation.com. And guys, just know a much better, happier life exists much closer than you think. Sometimes just sitting down and planning out what I'm going to do for the next week, month, year, not even the action taken and actually doing it, just the enjoyment of the thoughts and the conscious energy put towards creating the life that I want can be phenomenal. And actually writing it down, because thinking is one step, but writing it down is that action. Journaling about it, putting it on a whiteboard, writing it on a sticky note, There's all kinds of ways to get the energy going. And sometimes it's like, I want to get in shape. Let me do 10 push-ups right now. Oh, but that's not going to give me biceps. Not uh, not immediately, but it will over time. Yeah. It's like, it'll tone up your arms. It's maybe not the best for biceps, but you know what I'm saying. (laughs) So, guys, just think about that one step. Take that one step today. Do it for yourself. And... Like, spread your light and spread your love. That's what this is all about. It's like finding our light, helping it, like, uncovering, pulling off the things that have we've put over our light to let it shine its brightest and sharing that light with the world. I think that's what this is really all about. So, I love you guys. Have a fantastic day. And I will be talking to you again real soon.